and welcome to another video to teach you about the wonderful world of Latin. Today's video is going to teach you about passive periphrastics and what on earth those are. So we just learned about participles and we learned that these verbal adjectives are used more often in Latin than in English. And now we're going to learn in this chapter two ways that Latin uses participles that English would communicate in some other way. And this particular one that we're going to start with, the passive periphrastic, is only going to use the future passive participle. The one that we get from our second principle part, take off the RE, add on NDUS, NDA, and NDUM to get our nominative singular forms, just like the adjective magnus, magna, magnum. And we'd translate it if it's an adjective as about to be sent. In passive periphrastics, we'll tweak how we translate it just a little bit. So let's look at those. So a passive periphrastic, you probably don't like hearing this phrase because you don't entirely know what it means. So what does it mean? Well, let's take each word. The word passive, it means something's happening to the subject or the nominative word in your sentence. And to show that your sentence has a passive action, we're going to use the future passive participle. And then periphrastic is a word that comes from the ancient Greek language for a roundabout way of saying things. So it's not necessarily going to feel like the simplest way to say things. It's just a way that Latin has of expressing that will express similarly, but slightly differently in English, so that we keep it as literal as possible, but we're not totally able to translate it as literally as you might like. And so in order to communicate this idea, in the periphrastic, Latin uses the future passive participle and some form of the verb sum esse. And together they communicate some idea. And that idea is that there is some sense of obligation or some necessity to do some action. You can remember this with the rhyme nd must be, and that will help you translate these because passive periphrastics have the phrase must be blanked in them. So let's look at one. And remember, we're going to use our future passive participle that looks like metendus, metenda, metendum. All right. We've got one of those in this sentence, liber metendus est. So first off, let's see how it's a passive periphrastic, how we translate it, all that good stuff. Well, as I just reminded you, metendus is your future passive participle. Since it's a verbal adjective, it's going to modify something in the sentence. So because it's masculine nominative singular, it is modifying the word liber. Then the other part of our passive periphrastic is some form of the verb sum esse fui futurus. And we have est. That's our form of sum esse. It may help to review our forms of sum esse to help us remember all of our different passive periphrastic things. So we have our form of sum esse here est and our future passive participle, which means together we have a passive periphrastic. So something must be blanked. And now let's translate our thing. What must be blanked? Well, it's whatever the participle modifies. So in this sentence, the liber, the book. And then the book must be blanked because after our subject, when we translate, we need our verb in English. So the book must be blanked. And then the action that goes in that blank is whatever the meaning of the verb is that gives us our future passive participle. So 
It's from the verb mito mitere to send, so the book must be sended. Well, sended isn't a word, so the book must be sent. There's our nice translation. It communicates the obligation to send the book, and it's paraphrastic. It's a little bit around way of going about expressing our idea that we must send the book, but there it is. That's how Latin communicates this idea. And so you might be wondering, who has to send the book? Well, this is the beauty of the passive voice. We don't know who's doing the action. It's going to be hidden unless we have the person doing it expressed somehow in our sentence. So how do we do that with passive paraphrastics? With a normal indicative verb, we'd expect the ablative of personal agent or the ablative of means to explain who or what is doing the action of our passive verb. In a passive paraphrastic, we're going to do this slightly differently. Instead of an ablative of agent or ablative of means, the same idea of who has to send it is communicated by the dative of agent. So just like ablative of agent should be a person, dative of agent should be a person. And yes, this is the only time you're going to use the dative of agent with a passive paraphrastic. So let's add one into our sentence to help us understand how this works. So scriptori is a nice dative of agent here. So the book must be sent. Now we know who needs to send it. The scriptori, the book must be sent by the author. So your turn to practice. You get to practice with the sentence liber omnibus discipulis legendus est. So, after you pause the video, annotate and translate this sentence, and then I'll help you check over it. Okay. Hopefully you noticed that legendus is your future passive participle, that it's masculine nominative singular, so it's going to modify liber. We also have the verb est, which is a form of sum esse. So it, together with legendus, the future passive participle, means we have a passive paraphrastic where something must be something. And we know who is going to have to do this action because of the dative of agent omnibus discipulis. So we know that the book must be read. That's the verb that lego, legere, um, giving us legendus. And who has to read it? The book must be read by the dative of agent omnibus discipulis by all students. Once you've made any adjustments you need to make, resume the video, and we'll talk about one more cool feature of passive paraphrastics. All right, so to talk about this, we're going to use one of the most famous passive paraphrastics in Latin literature, Carthago de Lenda Est. This is a phrase that Cato the Elder added to the end of virtually every speech he gave in the Roman Senate. He could be talking about parades and say, furthermore, Carthago de Lenda Est, Carthage must be destroyed. And he'd add this on to all of his speeches, and it helped create this idea that, well, Carthago de Lenda Est, Carthage must be destroyed, and helped precipitate the Third Punic War in a way. And at the end of it, Carthage was destroyed. So let's talk about our passive paraphrastics and other tenses of verbs of sumesse. 
you'd expect that they need to be translated slightly differently. So Carthago de Lenda Est, we've said several times, means Carthage must be destroyed. But what about Carthago de Lenda Errat? Well, the obligation to destroy Carthage happened in the past. So Carthage had to be destroyed, or Carthage needed to be destroyed. Either of those would be good translations. If it's Carthago de Lenda Errit, so we have a future tense of the verb sum esse, the obligation to destroy Carthage is going to happen in the future. So during the Second Punic War, someone could have said Carthago de Lenda Errit, and they would have meant that Carthage will have to be destroyed or Carthage will need to be destroyed. All of these are roundabout ways of saying that Carthage must be destroyed. There's the obligation to destroy Carthage and that this is happening sometime in the present, past, and future. Once you've made sure you have all of these notes on passive paraphrastics, you get to go ahead and check your own understanding. So you can pause the video and use these questions to check your understanding. Once you've completed these questions, call me over and I'll help you check your work. Thank you and have a good day.